Uh, so this is where we ended up on Monday. We started off with um, some super rough sketches. And um, we had a couple of options to start with, including a tide pool version and a frost wolf type dire wolf uh, card back. But we ended up choosing a fairy dragon because that seems really cool. Lots of fancy colors and um, pretty shapes that I thought would work really nicely in the form of a card back. Um, and so I ran through a bunch of sketches trying to work out what would best fit the layout of the back of a Hearthstone card. We've got a few things that we need to uh, try and remember when I'm when I'm building one of these. Um, so I can turn off one of these. Turn off these. We have a, a base layout which all of our Hearthstone cards stick to. And we've got some major and minor swoops. We've got a central compass rose with a Hearthstone swirl in the middle. And so I spent a bunch of time on Monday working out the best way of approaching that using some fairy dragon elements and yesterday off stream i took those and went a little further tried to um oh all right that's what happens when it goes black all right i won't do that again um i tried to come up with some ways of filling in the gaps there are some one of the the biggest things that we were tried to get with our card back is a really solid feeling and part of that it comes from the frame of the card back um, which is really fine when you're working in metal or like a wooden constructed thing. It's easy to make a nice big chunky metal border. But if you're working on something like this where you're aiming for a more organic um, sort of vibe, it's, it can be a little more challenging to decide what to build that border out of. And so last night I was mostly spending my time trying to work out what I should build that out of and what to do with these elements around the wings. Um, because the wings, so we've got, uh, for those who don't know, we've got our reference here of the fairy dragon. It's a pretty iconic character from WoW, Warcraft 3 through WoW through Hearthstone. And these wings are pretty iconic, but it's also about the color. And I really like these antennae, which um, I talked about on Monday, but are, I feel like a really beautiful distillation of this really complicated wing piece. Uh, this antenna really has like, basically the same elements it's got the moon and the dark fading and the gradient um w but a little simpler so that's something really nice that we can bring into a hearthstone card back because it needs to be readable at a small size when you're playing on a phone and um easily recognizable and iconic so a few of the things that i was trying when i was working on this i really like the shape of these wings but an issue that i was running into was that they just sort of trail off to the side of the trail off to the side of the card and we don't really want anything that just gets chopped off everything needs to look like it's socketed in and it really feels solid it doesn't look like if you pick it up it's just going to fall off um so finding a way of um curling other elements around that to to really bracket those wings without making them feel like they're without losing too much of that large iconic shape was something that i was really going for um out of these options i ended up leaning towards this number three here, uh, which also used some more of these antenna shapes to build out the other points of the compass rows. Uh, one of the things that we try and do for each card back is keep that compass, those compass points um, there in at least some way. And in the, the sketch that I ended up with on Monday, we only had the north and south points um, and finding a way of getting a point on, on east and west um, was also something that I was trying to do yesterday off stream. So I had a couple of versions of that. Um, one of the things that I was playing with in my head was the fairy dragon has two, um, only two antenna. So does it feel weird? It's, it's not real. It's like a design element thing. And I'm not, it's not like I'm actually just taking a fairy dragon and cutting it up and building a card back out of it. It's, it's really just taking those elements, but does it feel strange if I have too many of these little flowing shapes? Um, in the end, so one of these options was replacing the those flowing feathery shapes in the middle with a, a more wit like webbed um, spiky back, which um, which would re represent the like back fin of the fairy dragon, which does sort of work, but I feel like it also has um, it also feels like maybe it's a naga thing or maybe it's some other sort of sea creature. It's not as iconic as the as those feathers or that wing piece. So I decided that 
going for another one, going some more of those feathery shapes, I think is going to work out okay. So I'm going to be working from number three here for today. And if that stops working, we'll try something else. Uh, so one thing, one thing real quick, uh, one person from chat was wondering, uh, about the compass and about the compass in particular, like, what does that mean on hardbacks? Uh, is that like a major part of the brand that we try to keep across all of these, et cetera? Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the Hearthstone logo. It's what you see when you, when that rep, the thing that represents Hearthstone, when you don't have that full Hearthstone text, uh, logo type. So it's something that we really try and, um, keep consistent, uh, even the the wheel in the middle is is really the thing the the swirl in the middle is really the thing that um is like the most important so we do have card backs and i'll show you some samples here um we do have card backs that break that mold a little bit so you've got like the legend card back is a hexagon we've got um this this one here which it still has the north point and these east and west points will will sort of exist some of them fudge it a little bit, um, and so you do see that that swirl in the middle is really the is really the icon. But as much as we can, um, we try and try and represent that, um, just because it, it feels a little more Hearthstone-y. And honestly, at designing, um, it's it can be nice having those uh, um, design elements that you really are trying to to hit. Um, like if if we didn't need to hit any of those things, it I feel like sometimes it can actually be quite a bit more difficult to just come up with something cool. Whereas if you have some restraints about um, where elements need to go and what elements you need to you definitely need to include in a card back, it can actually be um, a little bit easier to start from that framework and and build from there. Um. Someone else was also wondering uh, if uh, two questions. Um, someone was wondering who designed Brightwing. Uh, you, it was Sammy for most of the original ones. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sammy. Uh, I mean, basically, the the fairy dragon is one of the is something that has probably stayed almost the most like unchanged over the course of Warcraft and um, WoW and all the the various things that it's been present in um the, sammy did one drawing in 2000 and that's a, pretty sure that's a three 2003 and that has literally been it i'm pretty sure um in when they built this in warcraft 3 they literally just took sammy's painting and mapped that directly onto the 3d wings of the fairy dragon um and so it's definitely one of the things that has not gone through much change I was a part of, um, when I was working on Heroes of the Storm, I was part of uh, developing Brightwing, and that was a character that we, we definitely occasionally took some, some liberties with where we went or where we decided to pull from a certain character's like um, backstories. Like some, some characters have a lot of uh, different outfits or they're like a very specific point in time that we wanted to grab from. Whereas Brightwing, as a fairy dragon, it was like, Nope, we're gonna make it iconic. It's gonna be that fairy dragon that Sammy drew in two thousand and three, and that's gonna be pretty much it. Um, and this version in in Hearthstone is literally just Sammy's drawing over the top of a background of somewhere in WoW. Uh, it's one of the things that has yeah really stayed um, stayed the same over the over the decades at this point. I think uh, for the Brightwing legendary in Hearthstone, I believe Jerry Masco did that one. Um, and then this is uh this is your first card back right yes yes yeah, just so three is... straight to the wolves yeah why not uh it was gonna be too easy if i just started um started right away working on um working on something in in secret and taking my time with it and being comfortable uh we felt that would be that would be too easy um so we really decided that just so that I wasn't getting lazy and I wasn't um, resting on my laurels. Really needed to make sure I was uh, put to the test. 
so another composition question, since we've kind of been talking a little bit more about composition, uh, someone was wondering if anyone has suggested making card backs that don't incorporate the swirl at all and just go in a completely different direction, and if there are any circumstances where we might consider that. Um, well, you would probably have a better idea of <laughs> whether that has been suggested before. Um, as far as whether that is um, something we do, I don't think, like I said, I, I, I find it hard to come up with a reason in my head that we would, um, that it would be a good idea not to have that swirl. I, um, I don't think, like, there are so many ways, and as you saw, I pulled that, put up that image of all the card, or almost all the card backs that exist in the game at the moment, um, and there are so many different themes there, um, there's so many different themes there, and all of them have been able to get the swirl in there, um, somehow. I don't think... I don't think there's a theme that we could come up with that um, that wouldn't include that. Yeah, I think that's kind of there. Like you were saying, I think it's really nice having like some things between all of these that just just having some like really solid compositional consistencies. The uh, the compass is definitely one that we've gotten a little bit. Uh, a little bit more loose with over time uh, just based on what works for any particular card back and I feel like that's actually kind of made the swirl more important uh, but yeah I think across all of Hearthstone there, there are always like some stakes for any given piece of art that we want to try and be consistent about so that we can do more with the rest of it and still have it all feel like it's fitting into the same game and the same style and stuff like that. Um, and I think another part of that for these ones is just having them feel, well, having them feel fairly like constructed and flat and like something you can kind of, kind of sort of put on the back of a card, even if it is made out of, uh, <laughs> even if it is made out of fairy dragon. Uh, but yeah, I think those, Having a few of those stakes is always really, really helpful because it actually gives us more flexibility in other places. I find. Yeah, there are there are plenty of other places where we can um, where we can show that off. I mean, in, in the cards themselves, and we have logos or other things that um, that we can use to to show off that um, other other art. And yeah. Um. And another one, um, this is perfect since we're early in paint phase. Uh, from a concept art perspective, how can, how can you plan your color palette if you're like doing a custom card back that doesn't have any character reference? Do you, like, do you plan a palette? Do you just kind of go by feel, both? Um, um, a lot of that time, and like I'll, I'll speak uh, not necessarily from experience here, but uh, or not experienced directly on card backs, but um, I think it it, go, it comes down to any sort of illustration or um, art creating. Um, it's if anything, um, it it could be easier to choose a color palette for something that you're not beholden to. Um, like for example, this fairy dragon is a lot of colors that are going on that. Um, that I really want to represent. And if I was creating something from scratch that didn't have that sort of um, base, I might not be as um, as bold with the number of colors that are going on here. Uh, and that may, uh, it might be a little easier to come up with a, a palette that includes a couple of colors and something complementary for that, the glowy swell in the middle. Generally, it, um, it's relatively straightforward, and I mean, I say this having a lot of experience over the years creating um, creating art that, uh, or just illustrating, um, and do especially doing, honestly, doing cards for Hearthstone, where you really are, like, the color palette, you, you want to limit yourself because you're working at such a, a small size. Um, it's very similar 
to with the cod packs, obviously because they they show up at the same size on um, on the screen, especially if you're playing on a phone. So it makes sense if the use some of the same sensibilities that you would in a um, in a card illustration that you would in in the card back. So you try not to be too over the top with how many colors you use. You try not to be too crazy with the amount of contrast you get. Um, and yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, personally, I just sort of would feel it out and say, yeah, this feels like it works and go from there. Like I don't, I generally tend to fly by the seat of my pants quite a bit and just be like, yeah, this is, this is going to work as maybe a little obvious by the stream or maybe not. I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell, uh, what people can see from, um, from the outside. Uh, but again, so we don't have, there are a lot of um card backs in the game and almost all of them are based on something and even if they're not based on something that is directly in the game they're based on an idea or um or like a, a an element that le at least leans towards um uh a color color range um itself and then in that case too it, we also um would go back and look at the card backs that already exist if we if for example like we've got a lot of card backs that um involve molten lava and that sort of thing um and so if we're gonna if we're gonna do something that hits those notes again then we would go back and see take a look at what does exist in the game already and um try and come up with a way of approaching that again if we if we really decide that we all right we need to do that again we want to do that again um come up with a way we can do that without feeling too samey um, or try and find a different angle that we can approach it from. All right, we've got a bunch of uh, kind of slightly more technical questions on the like 3D and animation side of Artback. So I'm gonna go through those real quick and then I'll answer some VFX questions. Go for it. Um, so one was uh, how this how this 2D design becomes 3D and who makes that. Um, once these are once these are done on the 2D side, then uh, one of our 3D artists will uh, take the take the completed 2D image, take it into Maya or their 3D program of choice. Most of us use Maya, but it's kind of you know at the end of the day. A, a 3D export is a 3D export, so <laughs> um, it's kind of whatever you're comfortable in. Um, and they'll model it out there, and then they'll bring that into Unity, and that's where we'll apply like all of the different kind of goldenization animations via shader and stuff like that. Um, something else that was kind of in that same vein was if we uh, if we cut up the card backs as part of that, and it depends. Um, for some of them, we'll, we will actually like fully pop out sections of it, and so the final texture for the card back might look like what Luke has here, but with the antenna like moved off to the side or something like that. If that was something that we like wanted slowly, we're not probably not going to do that in this case, but if it was something that um, we just wanted slowly rotating or something like that, like the Heroes of the Storm card back uh, had the Trinity kind of rotating around it. And in cases like that, we will just fully break off pieces of the flat texture in 3D and animate them later. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that whole like three D modeling and animation process is all is all handed off to a three D artist to handle. Um, in the past, we um, we've got a bigger art team now, so three D handles most of the most of the card back modeling and animation now. Um, so I will not be modeling. I probably won't be animating this one. Someone was asking about that. Uh, it'll probably be one of the 3D people. Although, if Luke wants to give me a bunch of shimmery rainbow sparkles to 
animate. I will not be heartbroken. Um, <laughs> but it generally goes to 3D these days. I did um, I did a fair few in the past. Um, like, most mostly a couple years ago on, like, Karazam Mean Streets. Uh, that sort of timeline. Um, they're mostly handled by 3D now. Move more into just like pure effects. Um, so, on that flawless segue, uh, for some more effect specific questions, uh, someone was wondering if our VFX team works in cinematics at all. Um, we we don't. The uh, VFX artist is a title that's shared between um, like real-time VFX for games and cinematic VFX for movies and like pre-rendered sequences. They generally use very similar artistic principles, but incredibly different tool sets. So there is um, there are people who will jump back and forth um, like for different jobs or things like that, but it's not it's not super plug and play. Um, so we just kind of we t we talk with the cinematics artists every once in a while, especially when we have a uh, we have a VFX summit for all of Blizzard once a year, and we'll all kind of drool over their VFX breakdowns during that. Um, there have been some times when game animators went over to help out the cinematics team. Um, I think they did that a couple times for Heroes of the Storm, actually. Um, so it, it does happen, but it hasn't happened with our VFX team specifically. Um, someone was wondering if I work on VFX for the game boards. Uh, I don't. I wish I did because they're super fun. Um, but all of the the game boards are, again, handled by... Uh, handled mostly by our 3D team. So they'll do both the, the modeling, the animation, the effects for all of those clickables. Um, the clickables brainstorming process tends to be a very fun collaborative one that like the whole art team and the design team and just kind of anyone with an idea tends to chip in on. Um, so I haven't gotten to work on anything in those specifically, sadly. Very jealous, um, but yeah. As far as um, talking through a bit of like how the boards are handled, um, the it's actually it's in a lot of ways a very very similar process to how how making the 3D version of a card back is handled, just way bigger. Um, so someone on the 2D side, like Luke, will do the We'll do the whole board concept, and like they do with the card backs, they'll kind of be keeping in mind during that process what might be animated, where they're likely to be clickables, stuff like that, and they'll be talking a lot with 3D people or anyone else um, who's interested to kind of make sure that all of those are accounted for up front. Uh, you can kind of see that Luke's got uh, not, not a huge amount of layers for any given one of these, but um, something that 2D tries to do as well is just keep anything that might be moving later on in its own separate layer. So we just have whatever's painted underneath there uh, already there. Yeah, that that's, just... <clears throat> that's something that I do sometimes try and do. Uh, I'm not, not being very cautious about it at this point. Uh, generally, it's not too challenging, especially in a case like this where... Um, there's a lot of overlap, um, but I don't think that things will be moving a heap. It's fairly easy to cut things up afterwards, um, and especially while I'm working on um, trying to get, tr still trying to like actually work out the layout. I haven't got it completely set in my head. Um, it's it's a little smoother just to uh, work uh, organically, and then um, once I'm really like happy with where I'm going, then I can cut things up and separate those layers out. So hopefully, uh, by the time I'm on the final stream, 
which is tomorrow, I should be a little bit more um, a little bit more confident in making those different layer groups and uh, being a little nicer, a little more conscientious to the effects team. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's like, that's kind of the 2D process on boards, and then once 3D gets it, they'll, uh, again, model the whole thing out. I think there are a few screenshots floating around, uh, somewhere of like, or videos of boards from the side, where you can see them like, at not the intended, cr intended camera angle, and they look completely ridiculous. Um, so those are those are modeled out, and they break it up however they need to for animation, and then they'll do um, all of the animation and effects for clickables, and those are actually set up quite similar to gameplay effects as far as the tools that we're using there, um, and like the art principles and everything, of course. But um, yeah, so boards are boards are fun. They're a really they're such a big piece that it kind of invites a lot of collaboration. I think it lets uh, all of the artists involved use like a bunch of different skills, which is really fun. And there's one more effects question, and then we'll get back to a whole bunch more hardback questions for you, Luke. Um, so someone was wondering about, like, learning more about effects and animation. Um, I think for, for effects especially, like, you can download Unity or Unreal for free and kind of pretty much, pretty much everything that you need to start making effects is in either one of those. Like, even, even on Hearthstone, we have... We have, like, obviously a huge library of textures and shaders and materials that we've made over the years. Um, and we've got a little bit of custom stuff with Playmaker, which is um, kind of a visual scripter that we use to sequence our effects. But a lot of our stuff is honestly pretty much just Unity right out of the box. So um, Unity and Unreal are both great for just diving in there. Um, I think across, uh, someone was wondering earlier if Photoshop is like the standard or we kind of work in whatever is good as long as the output is usable. Um, we can work in whatever, but I think everyone internally uses Photoshop just because it makes it really, uh, like it's, it's used at every studio. And so if you know it, then you're pretty much good regardless of whether you're going to be painting concepts or textures or anything like that but you, know, you can use whatever 2d program for creating textures um and then yeah whichever 3d program you're comfortable with a lot of us use maya some people really really like blender um stuff like that for creating any, any like meshes or if you want to do 3d animation then any of them are good for that um I'm I'm not I don't have quite as much practice with 2D animation. There um I mean, you know, Flash rest in peace as a, I think it's Adobe Animate now. Um it's always been a pretty popular one for more cartoony stuff, but there's also a bunch of um there are a bunch of more open source um uh, or cheaper ones like uh, plastic animation paper is one that I'm really fond of for 2D animation. Um, and then for any of those, there's there are going to be a ton of free tutorials on YouTube for effects, for animation, for any specific program that you're looking for. Um, obviously, there's a lot of paid stuff too, but you, know, you can get most of these programs and a bunch of starter tutorials for free. And then if you're if you're really digging it, then you can always throw money at it later. Um, and there are forums. Forums are awesome and generally have super positive, helpful communities. So um, there's a real-time VFX forum that I absolutely love for effects. Uh, there are a bunch of animation forums, although I'm not sure of any of the names of them off the top of my head, sorry. Um, 
but yeah, so there's a lot of free software you can get. There are a lot of free tutorials you can get, and there are a lot of cool online communities that you can check out as well. Um, all right, Luke. Um, someone was wondering about um, your transition from the uh, from the heroes team over to Hearthstone, and if that's like uh, if that's a common thing, or if you, like um, a, a little bit. We have, I mean, across Blizzard, we generally have people generally stay here for quite a long time, um, and over the course of years um projects need different numbers of people people get um uh people decide they want to start trying something else um blizzard um i so for the first nine years of my uh career here at blizzard i was on team one this is the hearthstone or the starcraft slash heroes of the storm team um but it was always something that i really appreciate what is that um if if people f wanted to um, take a, an opportunity on a different team, um, they were always more than welcome to apply and um, move around. And uh, I was always very lucky that I got to work on the Hearthstone team indirectly outside of um, work. I've been contributing since the WoW TCG days. Um, so I, I felt like I was able to contribute directly. Um, so making that move from from the heroes of the storm team over to hearthstone was a, a pretty straightforward um movement like i already knew a lot of the artists on the team i was already familiar with the style um yeah so i, I think it was a um a pretty straightforward transfer and we, we do see that because we generally if someone is um looking for other opportunities it's it's always nice to be able to keep them at blizzard <coughs> rather than having somebody decide oh, i don't want to do this all right so i've so there's something really cool that i want to try out um yeah i think that's one of the things that i really like about blizzard well is like since it's uh since it's bigger and we've got a bunch of different teams it means that like uh like the the lifespan for a game developer at any given studio, a lot of places tends to be around like two years. And since you can, uh, hey, I think like a lot of the teams on Blizzard are just like, Blizzard are just really really fun to be at. Uh, and the work is pretty awesome, which means people tend to stick around longer. But uh, it also means that if there's someone who really really loves working at Blizzard, but know yeah wants to try something new then they can move to a different team uh and there's that uh, there's that safety net which is really nice um so luke two more two more questions about um more of the getting in at blizzard side um someone was wondering uh they they live in russia so again Rele relevant to your experience coming over from Australia, but they were wondering about um, yeah, it's like what do what do they need to know and um, like have to work at Blizzard as an artist. Um, and someone else was curious about um, if they if they're a freelancer, if they should be contacting Blizzard or. Contacting Blizzard will contact them. Uh, uh, yeah, so for, for uh, in-person positions, I mean, we've got, I think I talked about this a little bit on Monday, but we've got people from all over the world um, on all of our teams. Uh, if, you're, if you're great at what you do and you're passionate and you're somebody that we, that seems like you'd fit the team, you're not um then we'd be we're more than happy to put the work in and help you out um transferring over um bringing people i worked with um yeah there's people from all over the world um on all of our teams so 
uh, applying from overseas is no barrier at all. Um, from the um, from the freelance side, we will sometimes. I mean, I don't want to speak for Jeremy too much, and our outsourcing department too much, um, but we will reach out to people sometimes, um, and we do have a submissions at blizzard.com uh, email address for people who are interested in um, professionally contributing in that way. Because I know Hearthstone, uh, out of the teams at Blizzard, is uh, uses a lot of um, freelance artists, um, which I think is really cool. It means I get to work at least a little bit with, with a lot of really amazing artists and see all sorts of um, cool art that we wouldn't necessarily see if it was all internal. Um, yeah. But yeah, being coming from uh, an international location is definitely no no barrier at all. For a few more um, artifacts for me in particular. Um, someone was wondering a while ago. Sorry, I've been jumping around. Um, like what the what the main aspects of a card back are for you. So like, I know we went over the composition with the compass and the swirl and those like big and small uh, swoops on the frame earlier, but like, what else do you look for in a new design? Uh, something that I really like um, to, to play around with is the, like the really curvy um, radial symmetry. So, have finding a design that works really nicely in this sort of like s shape curve um i think always feels really nice to me uh we've got some of our car backs and it depends on the style some like this is a very organic uh piece so it really works nicely with these flowing shapes some more geometric like we're doing a, a dwarven car back or something it, it lends itself a little bit more to a more solid vertical vertically symmetrical piece but i think some card backs that i really like generally um it's not even though the main the main swoops are like this little the smaller card the smaller swoops in the corners and then this main uh, main one here i like to try and make every element um echo that uh that flow of motion or or uh yeah I like to yeah make every element really like um, play off that so that nothing like feels out of place or just feels like it's tacked on there. Um, there are a few questions about um, what sort of what sort of brushes you're using for this, uh, what dimensions you're working in, and uh, if you could touch more on the palette that you're using for sure. this particular. Um, so this is probably not big enough, actually. Uh, you would know better than I would. <laughs> I just started painting this. Um, honestly, while I'm, while I'm still working at a pretty rough stage, this is probably fine for this. So the document is 2,200 pixels high, which is pretty small considering I'm only working in a, a space this big. But um, because I'm not really getting into tight rendering yet, I, I don't think it's a huge issue. But now that I've said that, maybe I'll shrink this down a little bit and make it a little bigger. Um, <laughs> We've made you self-conscious. Uh, hey, you'll know. How big is it supposed to be? Because I, I don't... That's a, That can be an issue sometimes, too, um, coming from an illustration background where you're often trying to work quite high because your art may be used on posters or something like that. Um working on a, on assets that need to be uh, at a readable at a in-game size on a phone, making sure that your base, because obviously we can shrink anything down to the right size once we're putting it into the game, but starting off at a small enough resolution that you're not tricking yourself into um, painting too many details uh, can actually be quite good. And that, go that goes for illustration too. Like sometimes if I'm sketching for myself, starting at a lower resolution um, can be nice. Otherwise you can end up getting like too noodly too quickly. 
Uh, and that's definitely something I'm trying to avoid here is trying to not get into it. Like I really want to start rendering these butterfly wings and these feathery things. Um, you know, try and avoid doing that and make sure I've got all the, the broad shapes set before I get into that. Um, as far as brushes goes, uh, I'm using, I've got a set on my DeviantArt account that I think has pretty much everything that I'm using. Mostly I'm just using a, um, a custom brush that I set up that has a solid hard edge on one side and a soft edge on the other. Um, and depending on which way you paint, it goes back and forth. Um, Uh, yeah, so that's something that I've been using mostly for the last couple of years um, has really been uh, nice for rendering in general. Like um, it has some of the elements of a, of a hard round brush where you can just do a little circle and you can get a, a solid line. Like you can get pretty painterly, like chunky edges, but you can also get quick, um, quick rendering and soft shadows um, quite easily. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to um, because you have to be paying attention to which direction you're drawing in. Um, so like any yeah new thing, it'll take a little bit of adjusting to. Um, but yeah, I found that really handy. Um, and as far as color palette goes, uh, it's really, I mean, I'm really working from the, the Brightwing image here or this fairy dragon image here i'm trying so generally i think on the card backs we try not to go too crazy like we've got a lot of card backs in the game and we've got a lot of art on the screen at the same time we don't want things to be too over the top like it's nice when a card ha a back has a co cohesive feel and nothing it doesn't get too overly sparkly or or overly complicated um so this is definitely a challenge something that has basically all of the colors on it um to do that and yet still stay uh not like too glaringly over the top um so what i'm doing is using really letting these bright oranges um be the brightest colors and letting these cooler colors um be a little bit more muted for now. I may play around with that as I go, because one thing we do, Hearthstone is a very, like, we don't, it's not, it's not a pastel sort of uh, muted game. Everything is pretty, um, pretty punchy, and we like to make sure, it, it's not a, a realistic, like, grim dark uh, thing. We, we like to embrace the colors, but at the same time, we want to make sure it's not, um, not garish. So it's a, with a card back like this, it's a very fine line. Um, so I was wondering earlier if we're uh, allowed to use faces on card backs, say big, cute dragon eyes. Um, and we've got a couple in the, like the year of card backs in particular that have like some pretty big faces front and center for the dragon, the mammoth, the kraken. Uh, don't remember if we have any other than those ones, but those three are definitely big old faces. Yeah, there are a few elements like that. Um, I think because we want the card backs to stay feeling like a physical thing, we don't want something that's looking like it's too alive. Um, so I did think about this, about potentially having an eye in the middle, though we do the Old Gods um, expansion has like the Cthulhu eye in the middle of it, and that works because it's like quite a creepy sort of uh, disembodied eye like that's part of their thing it's you suddenly sprout tentacles and eyes um whereas this is if i had a disembodied eye in the middle like these sort of flowy feathers feel nice and they lend themselves to oh that feels like a fairy dragon whereas as soon as you have an eye you try and read the whole thing as like part of a, an actual creature um so i didn't necessarily the fairy dragons were not necessarily not creepy but that wasn't the quite the direction i wanted to go with um, with it. And we try not to do like a full a full face or a full animal or anything like that, um, because again we want it to feel more like a, a physical object and not um, part of a creature necessarily. Uh, 
Someone was wondering if you only do card backs or if you do card fronts as well. Uh, I mostly do card fronts. Um, if you put it like that, this is the first <laughs> card back I've ever done. So uh, it's going okay so far. But um, yeah, so the majority of my time working on or working with the Hearthstone team has always been um, creating card art or splash illustrations. So I worked on, um, like I said, I worked with the WoW TCG back when that was a thing. Um, and that was always fun. And some of that art still occasionally gets dredged up and used in Hearthstone. Um, and once once Team 5 started um, doing their thing at Blizzard, uh, I was really happy to be able to contribute to them. Um, so I did a few cards every set and was able to contribute key art for the Naxxramas adventure and the Black Rock Mountain adventure, which were really, really fun to work on. Uh, but I've only been on officially on the Hearthstone team for about six months now, so that's allowed me to um, play around with all the other elements of the game that you don't that we don't generally have freelance artists uh, work on. So UI and um, backgrounds like all of that sort of stuff card packs i've done a few card packs now so the year of or the um the class pack that we've started doing um and the year of the dragon card pack that we um started doing those were those were really fun and it's an interesting all of these elements have very similar well this card packs especially have a very similar um like set of guidelines or um, yeah, sort of guidelines that you, you have to hit is basically like you've got a big strap, you've got this same swirl in the middle, you, you've got um, it's all wrapped up in roughly the same way and then you take you take um, a an element and, or a theme and you try and wrap that around it in the most exciting way that you can. Um, that's been really fun to see the other side of um, well, the, the rest of the art of Hearthstone and how that gets put together. Um, someone was wondering how the adjustment to working from home has been for us. I don't know if anybody could hear the start of the stream. <laughs> you can probably guess at least a little bit how that's been going. Um, I have two daughters under three, so it's definitely been uh, quite, quite a challenge. When everybody's sleeping, uh, my my office at home is pretty nicely set up and uh, everything is working out okay. I have to definitely give a shout out to my wonderful wife who has done a great job trying to keep everybody under control during at least the stream. Um, and again, for uh, yeah, while trying to and now she has just started working from home again as well for her job. So things are pretty crazy. Um, but I mean, I, I really like my home office setup. I do miss talking to the people on the team. Um, miss like just being able to walk over and see what somebody's working on and have a chat or just go get a coffee. Um, and the the way you can just easily do that in person. So that's been a, a real change. But um, I mean, having worked so when I when I was working on Hearthstone previously, or even just doing my own uh, personal art, which like I said, with two young daughters, it does not happen as much as it used to, but um, I've always had a, a pretty decent setup for working from, doing art from home. Um, so that side, the actual working has not felt too different. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about it a little bit, maybe it's been a little bit different. Uh, I mean, I'm still, I'm still waiting for kuma to invade your stream i was promised 135 pounds of dog i know he's yeah. this is he just sleeps this time of day i can try it maybe maybe tomorrow's stream when we're almost <laughs> done i can't we can get him riled up and he can come and show himself and hope yeah. um yeah i think for me as well like the uh the work side of it hasn't uh just like we were able to bring all of our equipment home so like and our our IT team is full of absolute miracle workers. Uh, I can't believe how quickly they were able to get us all up and running. Um, so big ups to them. Um, but yeah, so on like the 
on the actual like creating work side, it's definitely not been too different. The biggest thing for me as well is definitely just uh, it's a very it's a team that kind of thrives on collaboration and having like everyone be able to have an opinion on everything. Um, and so that feedback loop becoming uh, like slower and more formal has definitely um, has definitely been trickier. I think it's it's especially tricky for effects because um, we're usually <laughs> like a lot of times we'll be critiquing something down to like a twentieth of a second, um, and so trying to do that when there's going to be lag uh, just inevitably and stuff like that has been has made feedback on that front trickier but yeah the biggest thing is just the people on the hearthstone team are awesome and so not being able to just see them every day not being able to have like pickup conversations in the hallway and stuff like that has definitely been the part that um i miss the most uh i am i am not multitasking between the stream and vfx tasks right now i wish i had enough brain cells to ha handle that but i do not i am all all stream questions until this is wrapped up and then i'll be back to vfx tasks <laughs> um had a couple of questions luke on uh one was how long does it take to plan out the card backs uh concept revision uh finished product how long and how long does like creating that final version take um and then related to that kind of how do you decide how do you determine like how finished do you want to get something before you hand it off um and, like how far do you take the concepts are there any storyboards of how a card a card back might animate stuff like that um for um, card backs themselves they're not we don't get quite that crazy um starting at the last question first um uh it's possible that there have been some that have been interesting but i think i think they're mostly pretty self-explanatory there are definitely that sort of thing like you were talking about um the uh the board that we do every set um there we definitely do like storyboards or breakout elements for those or on how those might animate or um working with uh, effects that we get um we can do a little bit of art to, to try and work out how um how yeah something my a card's effects might um plan out as far as an actual card th again this this being my first one i started sketching it on um last friday and i got the few sketches done i think uh, over the course of a week is roughly like how you'd get from concept um and you talk to some people get get some feedback on your base concept um and then getting get that uh through to like a pretty finished stage um and then i feel like a lot of the time that last like 10 percent of polish can can drag out a little bit or there can be some <laughs> feedback that comes in that you decide to change something so uh, a little over a week in the second 90 percent yes yes definitely so like this is feeling really good already i'm actually really happy with how this is going i'm gonna look at this one especially so i i will often have a small um i don't know if you saw me set it up earlier but i've got a tiny window of this on my second monitor um that i have up so that i can keep an eye on um keep an eye on how it looks at a smaller size uh and from that window it's like oh it's looking really good there's um it's like it's actually really getting there but the amount of actual detail that still needs to be painted into this card is hours and hours of um of rendering and texturing and making sure the materials all feel right um and that can be sometimes for i mean it's a i something that i really enjoyed coming over to the hearthstone team working on like ui and other elements of the game because the the card art is just it's just illustrations it's pretty straightforward it's like you'd see it's pretty much the same as you do for any other like uh illustration based project you've got uh certain 
um, limitations because you know your art needs to be readable really small and it's the same as other card games and stuff but generally you're just creating illustrations but the nice thing about um, the Hearthstone like the style is that everything in the game is painted so like there's so much when you're working on UI you're working on backgrounds you're working on all sorts of these things there everything is painted to be physical so it's lots of lots of texture painting and lots of material rendering that's re can be really satisfying it takes quite a while to get that level of polish that we want in the game but it's it's a really fun thing to work on was there a note that i missed along in the middle there that i think that was like three questions i'm not sure if i <laughs> answered all of them um i think you covered all of it like you went over some of the only other one was just like how do you know when a card back is finished uh, <laughs> it's the same thing as any other yeah. piece of art it's like when you're scheduled to move on to something else <laughs> Yep. Um, when somebody else looks at it and goes, yeah, it looks finished. Because a lot of the time I'm looking at a piece of art going, oh, there's all these things that I would really like to touch up. And I really, I'll just, just this little bit more, just a little bit more. And someone else looks like, no, that's great. You're done. Um, so I think it's, it, it comes a little bit, it comes a little bit with practice too, like knowing and again, that that came from work. Um, it's along the lines of making sure you don't work too big, um, is especially because Hostel, we want to make sure everything's nice and chunky. It still feels, even though everything's rendered out, and we want the materials to feel like we want our gold to feel like gold, and we want wood to feel like wood, and all of those things. Um, we are not making it all realistic. If you look at anything in the game, it's all you can still see some of the paint strokes. You can still see it feels handcrafted, and so um, if you're there is actually a challenging point where you're like, all right, I could clean this up a little bit more, but actually it's got a little bit more personality and a little bit more um, start, a little bit more like, uh, yeah, just personality um, if you if you don't like smooth out all of those edges and hide all of those brush strokes. Yeah, I think that's, that's actually... Uh... It's a big enough question to where we ask it a lot during artist interviews because uh, everyone has everyone has a little bit of a different answer for that. Uh, I think for a lot of people, it's just yeah. Part of part of it is when you when you need to be moving on to something else because there's always more to do. Um, and I think something else that I tend to lean on a lot is just like when I'm to the point of just I'm noodling on things over and over and over, then maybe it's like kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> close enough to where I should set it down and look at something else. And then you come back two weeks later and you realize that everything you did is a, is a disaster and you're ashamed of it forever. <laughs> uh, very rare occasion that you come back and look at it and you go, oh, it was, that worked out okay. <laughs> Um, someone was wondering what our favorite expansions to create art for have been. Um, I really, really liked Ungaro. That was wonderful just because it was dinosaurs and creepy, well not creepy, like uh, primordial um, jungle. That was really, really fun. Um, Outland was really cool the the latest one that we just released um i joined the team basically like a lot of it was already um in flight and or done but um, i was able to contribute a reasonable amount as well um just being able to do demon hunters and um that sort of like uh bang together uh post-apocalyptic vibes that we had going on with that um it was a really nice mix Um, yeah, Angora was definitely a really fun one for me as well. Uh, that was, yeah, that was a fun one. It was incredibly stressful trying to find, like, you know, we had to find, God, nine, ten, however many different ways to get a giant dinosaur onto the board in different feline custom summons. <laughs> and by the, end of, by the end of that set, I never wanted to animate a disc-shaped dinosaur again in my life. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Angora was really fun just because it was, um, aside from all the dinosaurs, it was just a huge amount of variety and all the elementals and stuff were really, really fun. 
Um, Boom's Day was another one that I really enjoyed for for similar reasons. Uh, anything where the classes have like really have like really varied identities like that is always a really really fun one. So that was fun. Uh, Trolls and the Loa were super fun. Um, and yeah, there've been uh, there've been a lot of good ones. Old Doom was. Uh, Old Doom was one that I like. I dreaded going into it because I was just like, everything is gonna be sand. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be prequel memes forever. Uh, and there's gonna be like, we're gonna have one effect and it's sand, and we're gonna have to find like 23 different versions of that. Um, and Old Doom wound up being one of my absolute favorites ever, just with all the different variety between. The characters and the backdrops and all the different plagues were so so cool, and uh, so that was another one where like that was that's the one that I always remember because I was so nervous going into it, and it was it's come out to be one of my absolute favorites, and I think uh, the whole team just did a gorgeous gorgeous job on Old Doom. Um, so I was wondering if either of us worked on the mystic forest card back uh we didn't that one was charlene lescomps uh and if you don't follow her highly suggest you do because she does beautiful work and it's always super fun super cute super charming and just she uh she and luke are both actually artists that i had been following for ages before I started working here. Um, Luke, we've, I think we've known each other for like eight years now, but I've been <laughs> following him on forums for ages before then. So, um, so when he came over just recently, um, it's been awesome finally getting to actually like work with him instead of just be friends and like you know, have this huge admiration for his art because it turns out he's awesome to work with too. <laughs> um, and Charlene, I Charlene, I met for the first time during my interview and got like completely starstruck, nervous because I'd been like geeking out over her art for years beforehand. And I hadn't quite processed that she was going to be in my interview until I actually like got the list and the meeting invites and stuff. Um, but yeah, so follow her. Lots of amazing artists, though. Um, what else have we got here? There are a few more questions, Luke, about um, about working at Blizzard. Um, if you have any advice on gaining visibility as an artist, um, art station, things like that, and also if it's necessary to move to Irvine to work as a 2D artist at Blizzard. Um, so as far as visibility goes, uh, art station, uh, Instagram, Twitter are all pretty great. Um, I think they've all gotten better. I mean, art station is is basically. It's interesting because it's a portfolio website rather than like a, um, as much as it is a social networking website. So a lot of the time, and your mileage may vary, I'm sure we've got people who spend a lot more time browsing ArtStation, but a lot of the time my use of ArtStation is finding somebody um, on Twitter or Instagram and seeing their link to ArtStation and then going and perusing their um, portfolio. Uh, I've been, I mean, I don't post very much just because it takes a long, a lot of effort. Um, but I've been really liking finding artists on Twitter. Uh, I think one of the main things about visibility is just making a lot of art. Like you, you it's hard to just say, um, oh, if you, if you get that one really amazing piece of art, suddenly everyone will see you. Um, and, and that'll be it. I, I think you just need to keep putting yourself out there um keep keep creating art and don't be discouraged if it doesn't feel like right off the bat it's not you're not getting a huge following or or whatever it's just 
making those connections, um, being nice to people and being professional, uh, really goes a long way. Um, and, and again, like if you're, I, I talk, touched a little bit on, on this at, on Monday, um, but being noticed like by artists at Blizzard, um, fan art is a really great way of doing it. Like, and I mean, it's, you, I don't think you necessarily should like see it as, it sounds a, maybe a little bit sometimes like, oh, I just sell out and copy someone else's work and make fan art and you'll become super famous. Um, I mean, it don't do it if you're not excited about it. Don't like pretend that you really like something that you don't just to, um, just to like become, just to be noticed. Um, but it is a really, like if we see cool stuff, cool fan art, um, and it's been that case, been the case for ever since I joined the team. I mean, I joined Blizzard because I was doing fan art. Um, being able to show that you understand the IP or understand an art style or uh, are able to take the IP and do something a little different with it um, are all really great ways of uh, getting noticed and getting attention. Um, as far as um having to move to Irvine up until this up until the last few months yes <laughs> Blizzard did not really do uh working from home that was not a thing uh everyone and we do like like being a team in one one place was really important um I mean it is still we've had a we've had a couple of people start who since all of this working from home has started and that's been a very interesting process um not being able to meet people face to face for that first time and uh, i think we've done a pretty good job but in general yeah it is it, it pretty much is necessary like i would imagine once if when things calm down a little um it will continue to be the case um that we want everyone to be um available and because uh, that that sense of uh, community and um, collaboration is really not the same if you're not together. Don't move to Irvine if you don't already work at Blizzard because it's really expensive <laughs> and not <laughs> worth doing. Um, but yeah, I, just, I feel like there was another question in the middle there that I missed. Um, I think I think that was I think you covered it. Um, hopefully, hopefully chat will correct us if we did not cover it. I'm sure they will. So I'm really trying, I really want to get this, um, like stained glass sort of effect going on here that you see in, um, the original, uh, fairy dragon. I'm worried that we're getting a little complicated. So this is going to be some back and forth of, um, playing around with this. I may, there may be too much white right now. Um, some interesting interesting back and forth between trying to get those um those elements that really feel iconic and not getting overly busy um a lot of the time if you end up doing so something like this i'll probably end up just knocking it all back with a a color layer so you still get those shapes um but it doesn't um they're not quite as intense as they are in that original thing and hopefully that will work out okay. Like I said, I've, I wouldn't say rod from my own back, but I've definitely made it a little challenging um, choosing something that's so crazy. Um, but I think it's, I think it's nice to, to find ways of um, choosing something that isn't immediately obvious as to how you'd like translate that and then finding a way you can do it comfortably. few people have been wondering if uh a if they can have your brushes uh or b where you got them from um i all of my yes i have a, a pack of brushes up on my deviant account that you can just download uh mr jack at deviant it's probably easier just to search it um there are some weird dashes in the name um but I think it has everything that I'm using right now. Um, I haven't updated it for a while, but I have, again, I haven't created any new brushes for a while. So, um, but I, I mean, I, this, this card back is not 
I'm not doing any rendering here that is making especially good use of the the like soft and hard edges of the brush. Um, so honestly, I could be getting a very similar effect here with pretty much a hard round brush. Um, but yes, uh, and where I got them. So I think I've got the few brushes that I use mostly. I've got a square brush. I've got a fun like little triangular brush that I really like for it's really nice for when I'm painting stone. Um, uh, you get these nice little, and, and in hearthstone, it, it's a little sharp for hearthstone. Hearthstone generally, we want things to be a little softer and a little chunkier and round. Um, but I like, I really like the way if I'm like, I might end up using it for this border here if I'm like building um, some edges, edge highlights here. You get these like little chunky shapes, uh, which are really nice for making it feel not so CG and not so perfectly um, perfectly straight. Uh, aside from that, I've got a square brush that I used to use heaps. Um, I've got a sort of soft textury brush that I'll use sometimes that I got from somebody's brush um, pack years ago that I do not remember. And that's pretty much it. I think there might be one other, oh, this one's so fun. Actually, I don't remember if this is in the pack. I'll have to go and update it. This is a like nice fiery sort of brush that I built for, um, I don't remember what, doing some effecty sort of things. Uh, but this is a fun brush that plays around with um, the dual color settings. Uh, which is nice for doing effects. Um, but yeah, that's, those are pretty much the brushes. Like like I said, I'm pretty much just using the one brush. And in all honesty, this could I could be getting pretty much the same effect with a hard round brush right now. There were a couple questions about um, about the Goldens. Um, one, do we have to do anything uh, anything special for them, or are they just animated versions of the normal ones? And also, uh, like, how do how do we animate those? Um, so, the Goldens use a fancier version of the uh, much fancier version uh, we updated the shader for that one a while ago um, but they use a fancier version of the same shader that we use for animating card backs um, so whether we're just using the base art as is or we're like cutting up parts of it to animate just depends on the piece of art uh, pretty much everything about any given golden animation is determined entirely by like what's in the base art that we want to capitalize on for the animated version. Um, so the crux of it all is this um, is this shader that we use to um, to layer different texture effects over the top of the base art and. Um, the big parts of that are we use um, a couple of a couple of masks um, stored in a single in a single RGBA file, so we get four. Um, we use those to mask out different parts of the golden, um, and that determines like where each effect will happen. Uh, if there's stuff that we want to animate in it, then we'll either uh, cut out those pieces so that we can like rotate or pan them or whatever um, whatever we need to to get that animation. Um, if we need to do like, you know, a little snip snap uh, pause or anything like that. Um, and the rest of it is, or the other thing that we can use for animation is there's a, uh, there's a type of texture called a flow map that um, will um, will move the underlying texture for you and it gets you some very 
it gives you much more organic animation. So the stuff that we cut out usually tends to be better for things that are more um, uh, more mechanical, that are like solid object stuff like that, where we need to do like very simple motion, something bobbing up and down, like some claws snapping, stuff like that. And a flow map is really, really good for really organic motion. If we need to like be distorting a whole bunch of stuff, if we need like some really fluidly curling smoke, if we want like um, humongous razor leaf is a really good example of using that to just kind of create this really organic motion on an entire character. Um, and then for the effects overlays, it's just we um, will take different textures of smoke, fire, moats, uh, things like that, and use them within these different masked areas uh, with different with different settings. If we want something um, that's more like bright and magical, uh, then we'll use an additive setting. Uh, if we want something that's a little bit more like shadowy or stuff like that, we'll use a multiply setting that darkens everything underneath instead of brightening it. Um, and we can use the shader to create a bunch more complexity within those with different colors, different uh, panning and rotation, stuff like that. Um, but it pretty much all just comes down to that shader um, and what textures we layer in with that. And um, kind of in a similar vein, Luke, um, once you hand off your art to 3D, uh, do you, if they need more support, do you give it to them or are you just... Nope, they're on their done own. With, done with it, and they need to <laughs> I don't deal want to touch it. that again. <laughs> no, of course. Anytime we need to do something that that will make their lives easier, I'm I'm happy to help out. I mean, all of our 3D artists are very very competent, so a lot of the time, if there's touch ups to the 2D art, a lot of the time that can be done on their end. But uh, anytime somebody needs something um, updated, a lot of the time it will be layers cut out like for a golden or in a card back or a card pack it's pieces layered properly so that those things can be textured onto the geo um, separately or animated um, or for the card pack instance um, the normally it would be created in a flat texture like this but um, because the card packs have a little bit of rotation to them a lot of the time you'll need to paint out the the left edge and the bottom um, bottom side for so that that can be wrapped around the 3d model um and so i'm happy to help out if that that stuff needs to get created um yeah anytime anytime we need to, to go back and forth i'm happy to do that yeah i think i'm bringing a am bringing a card a uh, card pack to you for some for some edges pretty soon fair warning oh yeah mm. Get hype Good <laughs> um so if um Someone, someone was wondering a while ago. Sorry. Uh, someone, yeah. Someone found the Hadija Chamberlain minion. Uh, we used to do uh, back when the team was much smaller. We used to do credits cards for everyone in the game. Uh, so that's that's where that's from. It's not a collectible card. It's also not a good card. Uh, I made one of the designers balance it when we were doing credits cards and then promptly decided that it should be nerfed into the ground. So, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll never, you'll never encounter it in a real game. And if you do feel sorry for the person who plays it because it's terrible. Um, so I was wondering if there have, if there's been any thought about, um, doing different things with the, um, with the with the board mat, the like sand pit that the minions actually go on. Um, I mean, we did the we did the wooden one for um, for Bob's Tavern, so it's something that we've it's something that we've done in that case, and we do like little adjustments to it with each set. Uh, we try to keep that space very consistent, which is why. For instance, like even when it switches over to the wood for Bob's Tavern, um, it's it's still kind of in a similar color space, just so it doesn't stray 
too much between games, um, between games and boards. Um, but yeah, it's something. It's something that we talk about. It's something that we probably won't do any crazy adjustments. Although people have definitely there have been some pitches for crazy adjustments. So we'll see. Maybe I'll be eating my words on that. Um, but yeah, we've. So it's definitely something where, like, so far we haven't. We've tried to stay fairly consistent, but it's definitely been discussed as well. Um, was wondering if we, uh, Luke, if you and I play Hearthstone regularly or if we feel like we get enough Hearthstone at work. Uh, I play a little bit, mostly mostly pve these days uh, and a bit of battlegrounds i used to play more um but we definitely we regularly play test at work and that uh does sort of scratch the for me um i don't as i said earlier having two two young children is a challenge hearthstone is definitely one of the games that is does lend itself to being still being able to play while you're trying to wrangle a toddler or hold a baby um but not as much as I used to. So I do really enjoy the amount of playtesting we get to do um, because I don't always get the time to uh, enjoy the, the game once it goes live. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think the playtests the play definitely help a lot outside of... Uh, the playtests are where I probably do most of my constructed games these days. I try to make sure that I'm still playing a bit outside of that just because I think it's uh, I think it's very important to see how things are uh, like for me as someone who's spending a lot of their time working on effects that uh, you know go straight and interact directly with gameplay uh, I really want to see um, how things are actually playing out in the wild are they like are they feeling good? Is there, like, what could we be doing better? Stuff like that. Um, and that's something that um, a lot of, like, a lot of people will always chime in on, which is really nice and super helpful. But, um, yeah, we have a lot of playtests at work, which are really fun. And at home, I, I play, like, a little bit of Constructed in PV, but I'm mostly Battlegrounds these days. Um someone was wondering if we would recommend a Cintiq and Photoshop or like an iPad and Procreate for art. Um, I mean, it depends on what you're comfortable with. I've seen, I have tried to get into Procreate and just have never quite made it work, but I feel like it's partly because I've never stuck with it long enough to do that. Um, I've seen some people do amazing things in it. Um, a Cintiq is definitely a very high-end professional piece of equipment, uh, mostly based on the the price. So unless you're you're serious and um, or you've got a lot of a lot of money to throw around, um, I I mean I up until we started working from home, I I have a Cintiq companion, which is the like laptop version, um, which is really handy if I'm traveling. But honestly, my my home PC was just set up with an old Wacom tablet, uh, and into those Wacom tablet, and I was I'm still perfectly happy to to use that um, if I'm not using an iPad, which I'm not. Um, and we do have a few other members of the team who are perfectly happy, even though we offer Cintiqs to everybody. Um, they're like, nope, I'm good. I'm I'm happy with my tablet. So uh, if you're getting into digital art, I and an iPad doesn't necessarily work, um, a, a regular Intuos Wacom tablet or, or similar is is still definitely the way to go. Yeah, I think for me, um, like I use I use Photoshop and um, the Cintiq at work, and I think it's really, really nice for that. It's nice to have the consistency and everything. I actually do like pretty much all of my pretty much all of my drawing uh, and just anything I'm doing on my own time, I do in Procreate. And it's really nice because I can just, I can take the iPad wherever. A Cintiq weighs like a billion pounds. Um, so 
I think because I draw a lot. Uh, oh, that's 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 not true. Um, yeah, I I really like Procreate just for like chilling out and drawing, and I've really really liked a lot of the like brushes and features that they've been adding. Um, but yeah, I think they definitely like Luke is saying. It depends. It depends on what you what you want to do, and kind of where you want to do it. Um, but I definitely Procreate took me some getting used to as well. But I really really enjoy it for just kind of chilling. Um, someone was wondering if anyone, if any of Hearthstone's artwork is hand drawn. Um, yeah, we have a few, not on the internal side, but we have a few uh, freelance artists who continue to do amazing work um, traditionally. Alex Horley is the one that springs to mind most. Um, his stuff is incredible, and, and oh. honestly, he's done some of the most iconic Warcraft and Hearthstone characters. Like, he, as far as artists who, like, represent exactly what, like, Blizzard art and... Um, what we're striving for he's definitely like at the top tier and he pretty much always will work in uh acrylics and oils with a little bit of digital um digital touch up at the end if it's if it needs uh yeah alex horley is incredible um he's done a lot of the hero cards he's done a lot of i mean he's done he's been working with blizzard for years like i feel like he's done more probably done more blizzard art than any blizzard artist who actually works at um certainly more warcraft art except maybe P peter lee <laughs> uh, but yeah so there, there definitely is a space for it and and if you go back to um uh like not final art there's definitely like i do a lot of sketching on paper i know a lot of people will do doodles on post-it notes and stuff across the team um for just like getting in initials ideas down I very rarely will do finished sketches um, in person, but or you know, traditionally, but um, just having I have a huge pad of paper on my desk. At, um, uh, even here, I've got a I've got a little sketchbook that I still will doodle in when I'm. I mean, my the very very first um, sketches for this piece were um, done on uh, in my sketchbook just to play around with some ideas and easily scribble back and forth. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I still really like to, to do that occasionally. Um, when time permits, you know, it's one of these days, maybe I'll do a, a traditionally painted um, card piece, but it's definitely, it's definitely, I've talked with the, um, the, the manager about that is like yeah you should really try it it's I, it's definitely something that i would have to choose a piece of art that is definitely within my comfort zone i'm not gonna i mean i do i still like doing traditional painting i very occasionally will um will get to to pull it out most of the time it's once a year for our blizzcon charity auction They're like hey could we do a do a painting or a drawing or something i'm like all right i'll i've got an excuse i'll sit down and do a painting um but outside of the app, yeah. One day, maybe. Uh, so right now, I'm really trying to find a way of getting these, um, these like, spiky uh, tail fins and these white spots in, or, or maybe, just, like, these, these elements here without making the... Um, the whole thing to spotty or polka dotty um because once it's gonna once it's gonna be really small uh it's gonna get it could get pretty busy um and i want to avoid like the way i've approached these wings is very very much more muted compared to the way those the wings here um look uh i, I may have gone a little too far in the other direction so far but um i'm pretty happy with the the tone of it right now um but yeah, this uh, this little bit here is where I'm struggling. I'm not quite sure whether I want to put another full wing, like the corner of these wings here, and and how these whether they fully overlap. Um, so that's what I'm trying to work out right now. A couple of people have been wondering um, 
which of our work for Hearthstone we are most proud of? Um, I think I've, I've really enjoyed in the early days working on the splash art. So like the Max Ramus and Black Rock Mountain pieces were really fun. But I think being able to um, being able to basically do all of the art for Elise uh, over all of her iterations has been really fun. Like it's it was very interesting. It was like completely coincidental that I was given the initial brief for her in um, in that first set. I was like, and then when the explorers came back for Ungaro, I was like, oh yeah, you did that one last time. Try it again. And then over the years, it's been like I've just been able to to keep that through line going. Um, that's been really fun. Yeah, I think. Uh, it's 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 tough it's tough for me uh, <laughs> to pick, but I think I really love that you've like done like all the different Elise pieces. I think that's kind of a fun thing that Hearthstone tries to tries to do if we can is like have like because because we have like recurring characters or like things that come up over and over um there are a lot of times where we'll try to like have let someone have something that is theirs in particular like luke has luke has got elise um dominic has um one of the effects artists has been doing all of the elise effects for a couple sets now i think things like that are always uh always really fun um for me, I think I I talked about this last stream a bit, so apologies to anyone who's getting the repeat. But uh, Curious Glimmer Root is definitely one of the things that I'm kind of uh, most proud of. I think it was just it was a very it was a very tricky one to get the communication right on, and it was a lot of collaboration between um, between like myself and the designer. Um, and the engineer, uh, Peter and Josh were those two. Um, but we just kind of, so we were running back and forth, working on that together and trying to get everything just right for a couple weeks straight. And that's one where it's like, it's not, it's not flashy. It's not anything super, super fancy, but it was a really fun, um, it was a really fun gameplay challenge, which is oftentimes what a lot of my favorite things tend to tend to be to work on. So that one, uh, I'm still really happy with more recently. I think, um, uh, doing, doing plague of death was really, really fun. Um, cause we got to kind of, I got to kind of like set up a lot of look for the, for the rest of the plagues, even though, um, other artists on the team did did all of the plagues other than Plague of Death and did a phenomenal job. I love how all of them came out. Uh, but Plague of Death was really fun, and I got to just blast the Prince of Egypt soundtrack for the entire time, which is the best way to work. Um, and doing all of the little effects for Demon Hunter was just like all the little slashes and all those things, just kind of figuring that out and figuring out how to bring it over the, like, all of the just incredible, gorgeous stuff that WoW has done, bring that over into like the Hearthstone style and have it work was really a really, really fun one. Um, Luke, which Blizzard games do you play and or enjoy the most? Um, I, I mean, I was, I joined Blizzard because I was a StarCraft fan and it's still probably the one that's closest to my heart. Um, I do not play very much anymore. It was always, it, and it's just too stressful. Like when I was working on, when I was on the <laughs> StarCraft team, uh, and even after we started working on Heroes, um, I would, most mornings I'd get in and play a couple of games of SE2. And if I won, I'd be like, yes, today's great. This is awesome. Well, actually, no, I wouldn't even be like that. It'd be like, yep, I won. That's fine. But if I lost it would just ruin my morning. Like until lunchtime, I'd be like grumpy and not as productive. Um, and I would always, it would always make me want to go back the next day and be like, all right, today I'm going to win. But 
but yeah, it got a little too stressful. And then I, um, uh, I still love playing Heroes. Um, I really, really enjoyed what we were able to do with that game. Um, but I've started, yeah. So StarCraft is the main thing. We've I've started watching uh, GSL is on right now. Tasteless and Atrocious casting it, and I've been watching that with my wife. Um, and yeah, I, I still love it. Um, yeah, I think for me, there uh, StarCraft Two was the first, um, the first Blizzard game that I really got into as well. Um, I, I haven't played that one in a while. Um, Diablo Three was actually one of the one of the games that really made me want to get into effects. Uh, I was in the industry for quite a while, um, as in art roles other than VFX before then, but um, Diablo 3's effects were just so cool that that was actually a pretty big part of how I started getting into that and trying to recreate a lot of their effects. It was a lot of like the early stuff that I did. Uh, and yeah, now I play, I've played a ton of Overwatch since it came out, uh, and I'm still awful at it, but I bloody love that game. Um, are kind of my big ones um someone was wondering what my favorite golden animations are uh and it's it's hard to it's hard to choose from just like everything that comes out now um there's just uh like nick uh nick and one of Nick is one of our effects artists. Uh, he and one of our old technical artists, Kyle, did a lot, a lot of work on Goldens um, after I had stopped working on Goldens um, to just do open up a lot of really incredible new animation options with that. And so now it's uh, now it's honestly kind of hard to hard to choose uh, <laughs> from the new ones as far as the ones that like I've worked on, which I only worked on them for Old Gods, so it's a very limited list, but uh, I I was really happy with how Corrupted Healbot came out, because she was a pain in the ass. Um, and so getting that one figured out was a really, really fun puzzle. Um, and also Psychotron, just because I was fresh off of Mad Max and super excited to make his guitar shoot fire. Um, someone was wondering if, uh, since Hearthstone is a game that's been around for a while, um, is there any reuse of like existing bits of cards to create new ones, or if they're always made from scratch? Um, I think we do, we do pretty much everything from scratch. That's definitely like being as the game has been around for so long and we have so, so many pieces of art, it's definitely, um, it's definitely gets tricky to find what can be like really unique and special about, uh, each new piece of art that you're creating. But I think that's part of the fun of it. Um, and I think that that, um, Hearthstone is a game where we try to we try to lean uh, very very simple and clean with a lot of stuff, and um, I think I think there's a lot of a lot of skill and a lot of fun in finding exactly what the like the best simple distillation of a character or a spell or a setting. Um, or anything like that is for for an effect, for a custom summon, for a card back, for a given piece of art. Um, so yeah, it's definitely it's we yeah everything we always try to do everything new, um, especially especially on card art and stuff like that. Um, effects obviously we have like a huge library of old like smoke and moats and fire and stuff like that that we don't recreate every single time um we just rearrange them into a, a new animation and recombine things and add some new stuff 
Um, but yeah, I think the 2D art in particular tends to be like brand new every single time. Yeah, Luke? Yeah, pretty much. There's very little, even for characters that exist already, there's very little. Like, it's one of the things that I really enjoy about Hearthstone is that everything, even UI elements and stuff, like there are certain, certain shared, like, Oh, there's a little bit of shared borders and stuff like that, but really a lot of it is um, is very custom, which can be can provide a lot of challenges when you're working on when you're trying to implement new features or something, and you really need to be like, man, if I could just use the same thing over and over, over again, this would be this would be way quicker. But um, but I think the game really benefits from, um, and it's it, you can really tell that everything has been. Um, built custom to to what you're creating um there were a few more questions uh luke in particular about um what what the most important part um is to you for like when you're rendering or polishing your artwork if you have any tips there and the follow-up uh, from someone else which i love which is how do you know when to stop um tips i i think one of the things that i like to think about when i'm painting uh especially in a piece for a hot stone like this um is just how whether it feels like 3d um like i i'm really happy with the way these um the feathers are curling around that inner um inner swirl and part of that like just adding in these shadows and getting these light um getting the like so all of our card backs and pretty much everything in the game is has a top down top right light source so it, it makes it easy to create art for the game because everything is should basically be lit consistently um and i think as soon as i can look at especially if i'm looking at my the, the smaller version on my second monitor if i can look at that and just feel like feel those pieces popping off the the page then a lot of the time i should be like all right we're pretty close to done and there'll be a little bit like if i'm looking at it from this stage I'm like, oh that's working pretty well if i zoom in there's some like rough edges here especially you want there you want to be able to see the brush strokes but um because we really like that handcrafted feel but at the same time we want i don't want to be too messy like some of these areas are really really scribbly so refining that to a couple of brush strokes that look like they were um really spontaneous uh can take a take, take a bit of time um but i think uh looking at it from a distance is a really good way of working out um whether something is working and needs needs extra work um because if you're just if you're spending your whole day noodling on something like this at this level or closer uh, you can just spend all day cleaning up every one of these brush strokes and adding new details here and there. And suddenly you zoom out and half that stuff you can't even see anymore. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. Part of it, and Hilly you mentioned this earlier, about um, not, about basically, like at the end of the day, especially, I'm like, uh, I've been working all day, like noodling back and forth at the towards the end of a project. And like, I think... This little bit needs to be adjusted. I've like got adjustment layers and I'm adjusting like a few percent back and forth. Like, I don't know if this is working. Just go home, look at it the next day. And a lot of the time you're like, oh, okay. It's either there or you can, you've can you suddenly seen like, oh, there's one one last tweak. Um, but I will say working in a professional environment definitely helps because once you're done, you're like, you pass it off and then someone else starts working on it and it's like, well, I can't go back to that anymore. Unless there's something really drastic and you get feedback and you're like, okay, you need to change that. But for the most part, it's like, all right, done. And then like with personal work, you can just keep, it can be hard to, to actually say, all right, this one's done now, do something else. Um, Cause you can just, if you don't have a deadline, um, it, it can definitely be a challenge. Part of that is usually I just get tired or I run out of time to go back. I just want to start something new. So <laughs> I have a lot of unfinished personal art lying around. Uh, something that was asked earlier was about if the um, if the most challenging part for us is generally uh, 
gameplay. I think on the uh, uh, or or if there's something else that's even trickier. I think on the effect side, like definitely, like game gameplay communication is one of the things that's very much first and foremost for us. Like communication and feel, um, and then really trying to like capture the character of the cards that we're creating effects for. Um, it's definitely like, it's challenging in the sense that it's very important to try and like, try and get right. And there's a lot of, uh, communication, um, and generally working with, you know, uh, pretty much always designers, but often also UI and engineering as well. Um, so that's a, that's definitely a big thing on the effect side. I think that's a bit less of a, I think it's a little bit less of a like direct factor for the 2D side, but you want to talk about, uh, what's most challenging for you, Luke? Um, sure. I mean, In the 12 yeah, minutes ga yeah gameplay, <laughs> gameplay, like it, it is important and we want, especially for looking at Kadot or, um, or just like UI and stuff. We want to make make sure things are clear. We want to make sure that someone can look at something and it, it seems obvious what um, what that thing does. Uh, I think that's really important, but it's not necessarily yeah. Like I said, like he just said, like for effects, you that stuff needs to be needs to be clear because you're playing in game and you need to be able to see what's going on. When it comes down to two D art, as long as especially for like card art, as long as um, as long as your stuff, you don't get too much overlap, like things don't start looking like each other, um, you're doing okay. Um, so it, I think that the hardest thing that I still find with Hearthstone Art is keeping it simple, like not trying to overdo it. Um, and again, this goes back to the knowing when to stop or knowing when to not, um, not keep noodling on it. Just being able to say, yep, this is done. And, or even just if something is too complicated, knowing what, where to, to pull back. Like, I'm still not sure if... I'm pretty happy with where this is going, but some of these bits might, might still be a little bit noodly. Um, yeah, so that's probably the biggest challenge. And then there's always, in any piece of art, something will come up like, oh, I didn't realize I didn't know how to draw that, or whatever. Um, so every, every new piece, or most new pieces, come up and provide their own unique challenges. But Yeah, I think that's... Uh... A very tricky one definitely is something we, that's a lot of a challenge for on the effect side as well it's just there's always the temptation to like add more and go bigger and go like just keep pushing the intensity or the detail of things and um, a lot of times that's just not the not the right thing for hearthstone style for like the card, the mechanic, what have you. Um, so that's there's always definitely that temptation to just like go nuts, and a lot of times like you shouldn't because it's not what's it's not what what's right for the game or the card. So that's definitely a very tricky one. Um, let's see. Uh, someone was wondering what the most what the most uh, challenging project on Hearthstone has been um, a lot of times it's kind of actually in that in that gameplay theme it tends to be the it tends to be the major marquee effects um, where uh, like communication and really nailing that fantasy on something that's going to be seen across a bunch of different cards is just like completely core to the effect um things like uh so like magnetic went through a ton of different uh iterations on the engineering side before like before we even touched it on the art side and then there was a whole nother loop of back and forth with like art and engineering and design and like concept and effects just to make sure that we had every part of that figured out and implemented in a way that felt really good um Galacrond went through so, so many different variations 
Um, and same for like same for demon hunters and stuff like that. Um, just any of those, most of those really core mechanics for a set uh, tend to a have a lot of teams looking at them. Uh, design has like a lot of things that they're trying out. Um, UI and art are generally talking a lot about what the what the right way to implement this and make it feel really good is and we're having that conversation with design and <laughs> we... are we getting the promised dogs luke yeah are they finally here <laughs> uh... <laughs> um... so i think those things that you're just gonna see a ton of that really impact gameplay and therefore have a lot of teams working on them tend to be tend to be the most challenging also tend to be the most fun um, my experience i do you have um yeah do you have any like major challenge ones on your side um i think it's individual it depends on each uh each piece of um, art. I, I think it's a very similar, very similar answer to that. The last question, where um, it's often it's just readability, um, especially when it comes down to two D art. Um, and I mean that's that's what I've worked on most. I think over the over my Hearthstone like career has been two D art for in the game um, for card art. Uh, you really like you have that temptation to make this super fancy illustration where you're getting really detailed or you're making it really realistic or something and that's not what the game needs um, and so keeping that in mind and making sure you don't go overboard or um, or you make sure that it um, make sure that it pretty much like that it's going to read at that tiny size is, is really important and something that even at this point years and years later having worked on so much i still find myself getting feedback on i was like oh hey just like this background could really pop a little better if it was like brighter or there was more contrast between the background and the character and, and that sort of thing it's like i should know that by now <laughs> uh, super important question are we allowed to bring pets to work uh yes and i live for it yeah um, that's probably the thing that you miss the most <laughs> it absolutely is um yeah we have a ton of we have a ton of office dogs we've got uh we've had a few office cats and i think someone has an office parrot um but yes a lot of people at a lot of people at Blizzard bring their dogs in. There's kind of a running joke that we have more corgis than people at Blizzard. That might actually be true. There are a um, lot of corgis. But, yeah, God, I miss Kuma. Uh, <laughs> I'll see if I can bring him in tomorrow um, to say hi on the on the stream. You can all say hello. Yeah. Um, someone, was, someone was asking about Lurker Below earlier. Uh, Nick did that, and yes, he did an amazing job. Um... And then another question for you, a uh, couple of questions for you, Luke. Um, how long did it, let's see. I guess maybe the, maybe this is for both of us. Uh, so how long did it come, how long did it take to come up with a like 2D to 3D process, uh, as in particular for card backs maybe? Um, Oh, sorry. No, this is. Oh, this is effects. I'm dumb. Uh, never mind. Forget that. I'm not talking to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, so the question is, how long did it come to take? How long did it take to come up with a 2D to 3D process? And was it hard to find that cadence? What are some downsides to working only in 3D? Um, or do we? mix 2D and 3D effects, and do we use like After Effects or any pre-rendered effects? Okay. Um, so Hearthstone was a Hearthstone was a 3D game from very early on. Um, 
And so the effects have been being built in, like, created in this 3D space since long, long before I was here. Um, but since we have a... Um, since we have a 2D camera, there is uh, effectively a 2D camera, um, a fixed camera. That's it means there's a lot of stuff we can cheat. Uh, so in a similar way to where like if you tilt, if you were to tilt the board to a weird angle, it just looks completely wonky. The same thing is true for a lot of our effects because uh, they can be tailored to that specific camera angle. Uh, so we can do a lot of really cool things with 3D meshes. Uh, that we couldn't necessarily get away with otherwise because we know exactly what they're going to look like at all times. Um, so a lot, a lot of our effects, especially these days, rely on like panning textures across um, across these really simple meshes that we've made or stuff like that. And that lets us get like a lot of this really, really nice clean look that we can really control the like the timing of and stuff. Um, and that's been really nice. It's kind of, um, we use a lot of like animated 2D flipbooks as well, um, or we'll use uh, kind of a more optimized version of a flipbook called a dissolve. Uh, so we don't, we don't tend to do a lot of like, we don't really do any pre-rendered stuff or anything in After Effects, anything like that. It's all real time, um, but it is, it is kind of a mix of like using 3D meshes and like 2D animated flip books and layering together all of these different uh, just general particle effects. Um, effects, is, effects is kind of a kitchen sink sort of uh, discipline in a lot of ways, which is part of why I really, really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, so we just kind of, we, we use whatever works for each effect, depending on what we have in mind, it's kind of bounce between particles and 2D animation taken over into that 3D space and 3D models, however we need. Uh, nice. Well, God, we're I think okay. we're basically done. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with how this is coming together. Uh, hopefully, I feel like at this stage, tomorrow's stream is just going to be noodling, but I think that should be good. Plus, we'll have heaps of other things to talk about. Um, Luke, I've been, look I've been looking at the chat, and I just looked back, and it's just basically done. I don't know what you did in the last <laughs> so don't, 15 don't minutes. Don't tell me. I feel like, and this is the same one I used to do personal streams to, which is something that one day we'll <laughs> want to get back to. I feel like I'm it's just sitting here having to paint the whole time. It makes me really focus. Uh, this is not as efficient as I always am, but um, I'm glad I got to show off. And yeah, so it, thank you everybody for showing up. Um, I'm glad we got to answer a heap of questions. I'm glad this worked out. It's always a little stressful. Uh, I think I know where I'm going, but maybe this time it's just going to be terrible. Um, and we're going to be finishing up. We're going to do another wrap. We're going to do a final polish pass stream tomorrow same time same place um so thanks for coming up and see you tomorrow oh thanks y'all oh, it's good to see you again pull up a chair by the hearth